The 1970s Topps baseball card set is a sneaky son of a gun. At first glance, it looks pretty boring. Gray border, small font, just about zero design elements. Yawn. But then you really start to look at things and you notice the photography is pretty darn good. And the set is huge at 720 cards. And those blue and yellow and white card backs with incredible cartoons. Throw in all the usual Hall of Famers and some rock-solid rookie cards, and you have a winner, even all these years later. So it's really no surprise that this set has a strong following and that it contains plenty of valuable cards within its walls. What follows is a list of the 10 most valuable cards from the 1970s Topps Baseball card set, as listed by the PSA SMR price guide for PSA 7 specimens. I pick sevens because while they may not be affordable for the average collector, they are reasonably plentiful enough that we might at least run into them at some point in our lives. Let's dig in. A third year Nolan Ryan card showing him as he looked during the New York Mets amazing run to the 1969 World Series title and a high numbered card to boot. Yeah, it's a pretty strong recipe for a popular card and a correspondingly high price tag. How high? More than $150 in PSA 7, with stats up to $300 plus to $1,500 plus as you move into 8 and 9 territory. Sure, Munson shares his rookie card here with the inimitable Dave McDonald, but at least the New York Yankees captain gets top billing. And well, dude is a bona fide legend and has been since his death 40 years ago. With a strong contingent of folks who think Munson belongs in the Hall of Fame, you might never find his rookie card under its current 80-plus level again. In 1970, Johnny Bench had a truly monstrous season, spacking 45 home runs and driving in 148 runs to lead the Cincinnati Reds to a National League West title. For his treble, he was awarded the first of two Most Valuable Player Awards, the other coming in 1972, and arriving just in time to accompany Bench's breakout was this beautiful 1970 Topps card. It's still a classic nearly 50 years on. Little wonder it fetches $75 or more in PSA 7 condition. Meanwhile, Bench's hustling teammate Pete Rose saw his batting average plummet all the way down to 316 in 1970. That meager output put an end to his streak of the National League batting titles at two. Even so, Pete pays baseball with 205 hits and scored another solid mid-career tops card. This headshot probably gives as good a look at this mug as any card out there, for better or for worse. Always popular, even if he's not a Hall of Famer yet. Pete and his fire keep this one at 50-plus in graded near-mint condition. By 1970, Willie Mays' speed had long ceased to be a real asset on the base path, and his power was fading as well. But wouldn't you know it, the Say Hey Kid cranked it up a notch for his age, 39 seasons, and smacked 28 long balls, the last time he reached 20 homers in a season. Then, for good measure, in 1971, he stole 23 bases. Take that, father time. Of course, not long after that, Mays looked feeble for the New York Mets, but not before he scored a couple more solid slabs of cardboard, including this 1970s Topps issue. Coming in way up at number 600, the Mays Butte checks in well north of $60 in PSA 7. Hank Aaron sort of sneaked up on people when it came to home runs. Nobody really thought of him as a challenger to Babe Ruth's record 714 round trippers in the same way they thought of Mays and Mickey Mantle. By 1970, Aaron had sailed way past 500 dingers, and things were just getting heated up. Though his 1970s Topps card shows Hank in a pensive mood off the field, it's still a classic shot of a true legend caressing a baseball with a glove tucked under one arm. Little wonder PSA 7 copies land in the $50 range. Like Munson, Clemente was an absolute superstar whose flame burned brighter in the years after his untimely death. Unlike Munson, though, Clemente is enshrined in Cooperstown, and his 1970 card is a stunner. 
There stands Roberto, with a bat in his hand, wearing his home Pittsburgh Pirates vest, and with Sonny Forbes Field looming in the background. It's a combo that brings in more than $50 and PSA 7 most of the time. A while back, I christened this card as the best in the 1970s top set, and I haven't really found anything to persuade me from that opinion. Young Reggie swinging a mighty bat with Yankee Stadium in the background on a second-year card. Yup, it's a classic. And a classic that fetches $50 or more in PSA 7. Everything that goes about the previous Hank Aaron card goes here too except that this all-star version features the exploding newspaper design that you probably either love or hate. Consider me in the former camp, especially since these cards give me the comic book feels as a bonus. This is a $40 to $50 card that vaults all the way to about $300 in PSA 8 and creeps into the $1,500 range in PSA 8. Same story as the previous bench card goes for this Aaron All-Star, right down to the pricing for the Aaron. I'll award bonus points here to Johnny Bench because he gives us some gorgeous blue sky to build our ballpark dreams around. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel, WaxPackGods.com.